Hi, data practitioners. Welcome to be back in our new Data Pancakes episode. And uh, today we would like to discuss data security. And maybe let's start with a quick recap first. So remember, so the previous time we first discussed the different business domains. So it's important you should look from a business perspective. So what are the capabilities and the business concerns? Next, you need to look into well, the solution architecture that sits underneath. So how do applications in that respect align to these different business concerns? And how do workspaces, for instance, within Fabric, so when doing data engineering, for instance, and building data products, how do these workspaces also align to your business domains? And you should first get clarity on that. And I think that's an important starting point because why, if you think about also data security, you will have also these different boundaries. So we, um, within a minute, we will discuss domains as well workspaces and you can influence those um, constructs as well via data security. Um, so that's important. Um, second, we previous time looked at data products. So we um, went very deep with this subject all the way into Microsoft Purview. We cu curated a data set within Microsoft Fabric. We defined first logically a data product and we linked it to these different data sets and we made it available for users so they can themselves self-service, go into the catalog, see what data is accessible, who owns that, what is the quality, what kind of controls are there. And they could then start to subscribe themselves also to these data products, which we will also show within a minute. But also for recapping, just to look at um, how could you manage data security within Microsoft Fabric itself, we have this slide. And remember, so we also previously discussed this, but let's do a quick recap. So are there different boundaries in that respect? So the first boundary you should be cautious of is Microsoft Fabric itself. It runs on the cloud. It's a SaaS platform. But in order to get access, you need to be in Active Directory and be authenticated. And you need to be in that security group in order to ensure you get access even to Microsoft Fabric. So that's the first um, boundary, you could say. Next, there are domains. So domains are for logically grouping workspaces together. There, ideally, go for that alignment. So look at the business domains and try to align your domains within Fabric as well to the business domains you would have. But it's important, so the domain is not a security boundary. It's mainly for logically organizing and grouping artifacts and workspaces together. Then next, there's a workspace. So workspace is where the real artifacts within. Again, this is a security boundary. So you can set roles, which also Sarat will show in a minute, on this level. So depending on the role you have, you can cert do certain activities within that workspace. Next, there are artifacts. So for instance, there's a lakehouse artifact or a warehouse artifact. So you could even set item level access on these different artifacts. And then depending on the artifact type, you have additional security controls. So a lake house, for instance, there's a SQL endpoint. You can set security on that. Or within a warehouse, for instance, you can grant access via the grant and deny SQL commands and statements. So allow really for fine-grained access even within the data itself. And next, well, these artifacts and these workspaces, they closely work together with the one lake um, environment. So that's um, one data lake you would have for your entire organization within all files and tables will be stored within. And even on that level, you can set security. So this is still on the roadmap. Today, you can um, set data security on tables, but shortly even you have fine-grained access management within tables. So including dynamic data uh, masking, for instance. So this is on the data security part, which we will also demonstrate within a minute. What I would like to do now next is demonstrate the user story of how usually uh, users would go and enter the catalog and will find data products and then will request for data products. So I will be back within a minute showing you the catalog. Okay, here we now are at the catalog. So imagine I'm a business user and then usually this will be the, the screen I'm confronted with first. So if I'm in the catalog, in order to find a data product, usually what I then would do is I would go under data management. Here I have this section data products. So let me click on that. And then from here, you will see an overview of all my data products. Um, no, remember, well, this is a demo environment. I don't have that many data products. So, um, Either I could filter here by name or soon in the future, there will be a co-pilot even here assisting me for finding the right data product depending on my requirements or what I type in. 
But here in this case, I look for the data product called check-in info. So let me click on that. And then I'm directed to an overview page. So here you can see lots of detailed information about this data product. I can see the owner, the update frequency, even the data assets linked to this. I even see there are some health actions. So apparently, well, there are some issues, quite a few, as you can see here with this data product. So it's up to Sarat to really start working, fixing all of these actions. Um, but next, what I would uh, like to do is request for this data. Usually here on the left, um, you could go to data access, but Microsoft Fabric isn't supported yet. So you could do data access request directly from the catalog for some of the services, mainly Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 and Azure SQL, and soon also Microsoft Fabric will be added. But for now, we will do this manually. And how I then would recommend to do this is you see the name here of the data product owner. You would click on this. And here, well, you see this tiny friendly icon. So if I would click on that now, I see a pop-up. Um, in Outlook, and I could directly request Sarat, my friendly colleague, to give me access to this data product. So let me take a break here and hand it over to you, Sarat, to show what uh, kind of are the next steps usually and what are also the considerations in that respect. Hi. So before we actually get into the demo, I just want to remind you that uh, I am the data product owner for the requested data set. Pete Hind belongs to a different domain, which was called the uh, baggage handling management and I am part of the air flights operations management. So now the scenario is I am the data product owner and Pete Hine has requested access to the data set which is the check-in info. So how do we do this? So as you can see on the screen right now I am in the home page for Microsoft Fabric. Uh, you can see that uh, I have my different uh, items in here which I have listed so you can see that in the uh, workspaces tab. So what I would do is first I would go into my AOM. That's basically my air flights operations management domain. And as soon as I go into my workspace, I can see that I have arranged this in three different layers. That's basically represent the medallion architecture. So we have the bronze, silver and gold. Uh, I would click on my gold and that's the layer where I have my data products. So in this example, if I go into my goal layer, I can see that I have two different folders, right? So basically within the data products, or I actually publish all my data products here, I see two different data products. One is the carriage info, and the second one is the check-in info. The one which Pete Hine had requested access is check-in info. So what I would do, I would go and give him access. So these are the steps. Uh, once I get in here, I can see that I have my a lake house, which is about check-in info. It contains multiple tables which are related to the check-in info and I would like to give access to Pete Hine. Uh, there's a share button as you can see. So if I click on this, I would just go into the screen. So here I could enter the name of the person who has requested this or it could also be a group. So in this case, I would say I would give access to Pete Hine. And as you can see, this only gives him access to connect to the SQL endpoint. So he could use either Azure Data Studio, SQL Server Management Studio to connect to that particular endpoint, but nothing else, right? I would need to give him additional rights so that he gets access to certain tables that's called object level security, which we used to have in our traditional SQL Server and Synapse. So here I could send him a notification via an email saying that he could connect to my SQL endpoint. And uh, once I do that, then obviously he gets access. So, but on the same time, you can provide additional permissions. So if I check the all SQL endpoint data, then he gets kind of a DB reader onto all my tables inside the SQL endpoint. The next piece is like, let's say a data analyst or a data scientist. If that was a the case, then I could check that box, which gives him access to all underlying data files on one lake. The third scenario, it's a business user. They don't want access to one or two, but just want to build reports on top of the semantic model, then I would choose option three. In this scenario, I would just give him connect, right? So he can just connect to my SQL endpoint, right? The next thing is, is I need to go into my lake house and start giving him access to the objects or tables which Pitai needs access to. So if I get into my lake house, I can see I have a dimension and I have one fact table which contains my check-in info. 
So I would go and uh, create a new SQL query, uh, which is giving, uh, it's a grand statement. So I would do a grand select on this particular object, which is basically the fact check-in info uh, to Pthine's identity. So this can be Pthine or it could also be a group to which Pthine uh, belongs. So usually we would recommend to provide access to groups so that it becomes easier to manage. So in this scenario, this is nothing but what we call as object level security, like we mentioned earlier, uh, inside SQL Server or also Synapse uh, de dedicated uh, pools or uh, serverless pools. So as you can see here, uh, we have given him access on this particular object. So as soon as Pthine uses Azure Data Studio or SSMS to connect as a data analyst or a data scientist, he can get access onto this particular table and not the others. So this is a way of how you could restrict and provide access to Pthine inside my uh, data products lake house. There's a second option, right? So this is by basically I'm just providing an absent, uh, option to one particular table, but let's say that we have a second scenario where I'm creating a separate workspace per medallion architecture. So in this scenario, we are talking about a workspace uh, which is AOM, that's basically, again, Air Flight's Operations Management Arrivals, but this is going, uh, it's, it's been dedicated to my gold layer inside the medallion architecture. So as you can see, uh, I have my lake house there. I would move this into my check-in info folder, which I have. So uh, all my products, basically the check-in info product is actually inside my check-in info folder. What I would do in this case is let's say that uh, Pete Hein wants to see all the sources. So how was this generated? Was it a data pipeline? What is a data flow gen to? What was the logic used? Was it a notebook? In that scenario, I would give him access to get into my workspace. So I would click on manage access. As you can see here, I would click on add people or groups. And uh, in this scenario, basically uh, what Pthine can do is if he can have read access onto my uh, notebooks or data flow gen two or pipelines. So if you click there, there are multiple roles. So there is an admin role, there's a member, contributor, viewer. In this scenario, I just want him to view. So what's the logic which was used to create the product? Uh, what is, was it a pipeline? Was it a data flow gen two? So in this scenario, I would just give him a viewer right to go and see how this data was generated. So in this sense, I would add him as a viewer and that's it. So now Pthine has access to my workspace. He can come in and actually look at my notebooks. He can execute notebooks, but he cannot actually start uh, uh, editing stuff or deleting stuff from my workspace. So with that, uh, now Pthine has access to my data. So Next important thing which we wanted to talk about was, okay, how does Pthine trust this data? Because in, in data mesh world, we talk about a lot of trust because there would be a lot of stuff which people actually uh, get access to. So how do I trust my data to which I can start building my reports with? So that's why we have the concept of endorsements within Microsoft Fabric. So you can literally endorse this data product. So I am a data product owner. You can see that it has not been endorsed yet. So I would go and now endorse this data product. <clears throat> so for that, the first thing you have to do is you need to go, you need an admin to enable this setting. That's in the admin portal. Uh, you could search for certification. And as you can see, it has been enabled for a subset of the organization. So first thing you have to set the flag and then you could do it for the entire organization, but we would recommend to do it only for specific security groups. And in this scenario, I have a group, a security group called data owners, where all my data owners for the organizations are added, right? Uh, you can also delegate the sitting to a domain owner. So the domain owners are more uh, knowledgeable on who in their team can be data product owners, the people who can endorse their data set. So this can be delegated to also the domain owners. So once we have done that, uh, I'm a part of the data owner groups because I'm a data product owner. So I go back to my workspace and as you can see, I have this particular lake house. I would go into settings and within settings, I have this uh, option of setting my sensitivity label. I can say it's confidential data because it's check-in info uh, and I apply a label on top of it. So this is nothing but the information protection label. And then inside my endorsement, I would 
say that it's certified. So it's certified by the data product owner on this particular date that it's a trusted source. So Pete Hine can start using this source inside his uh, source. There's also an option to set it as master data. So if there is master data inside my data product, I can also set that. So as you can see now, it has been uh, certified or endorsed uh, in this case. So the uh, lake house has been endorsed and certified. So Pete Hine can trust the data set which he's going to build. The scenario which we saw, which I want to talk about now is basically we have something uh, called one lake data hub within Microsoft Fabric. So we saw the scenario where Pete Hine came in through purview, but what's the case when people are working within Fabric? So how do they find items within Fabric? And in this scenario, we have the concept of one lake data hub. You can filter on domain. So as you can see, I have my baggage handling management and air flights operations management. Here you can see I have my subdomains listed. So it really helps you to filter down on the items which you need per subdomain or domain based on which team you're working with. So it makes it very easy. And as you can see here, you, you also find the certified lake house uh, data product, which was basically my check-in info, which I had. Uh, with this, uh, what I would like to pass it back to Pete Hine. So now he has access to the data which he has requested to. Uh, we are, like Pete Hine mentioned, working on, on extending this uh, by uh, hooking up with Purview so that we will have automatic access workflows triggered from uh, Purview. But that is something which we are currently working on. So uh, as of now, you see how you can still secure the data. Uh, so with this, Pete Hine should be able to start uh, working with this data product and start creating business value. With this, I would like to hand it back to Pete Hein. Well, thanks, uh, Surat, for passing it back to me. And let's find out, indeed, if I have access. So I'm here now in Microfabric. So this is my environment. Uh, on the left, you can see um, here the menu and the, uh, the different uh, experiences. So let me click on data engineering. And now on the left, I see the workspaces and indeed there's ALM check-ins team one. So let me click on that. And indeed, as you can see, I have access. You see the alerts, data prep, as well the data product. I could see, zoom into and even indeed see the ALM check-in info. So this is the data set indeed that corresponds to that data product, which we uh, have in the catalog. So thank you, Sarat, for providing me access. And um, yeah, I hope you, uh, you enjoyed um, this session. So we looked at many diff different things. So the typical workflow of getting into the catalog, finding a data product, requesting um, access for that. You saw Sarat also discussing quickly the different um, configurations, security methods we have within uh, Microfabric. And at the end, he gave me access on the workspace level. And indeed, I have access. So hope you enjoyed, as always, subscribe and a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching.